The Kingdom Hearts series has been loved by so many people, and it's hard to believe that it's been 20 years since the first game. With 20 years, a total of at least 10 games has been released as of the date of this video. Which means technically it's only right to finally do a full-on ranking system of games that I personally love. This won't be easy though, as some people may have diverse opinions and those diverse opinions are to be recognized. For example, we have that mobile phone game known as Union Cross, but I have yet to have played this, so naturally it will not be included onto the list. However though, the next following thing that should be also mentioned is of course that we also have the re-versions such as Chain of Memories as well as Coded. We can't forget the final mix versions from Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, as well as Burst by Sleep. So that's going to be interesting to talk about. Furthermore, I should probably go ahead and just say that we're looking at the base game rather than like say for example the quality of the game or any of that nature. This is just purely opinion, personally of my personal opinions, so anything you feel different to by all means please label them into the comments. Without further ado, here is my full on in order from least to greatest of Kingdom Hearts games. Some of you may have already guessed as to which ones are my personal favorites, but for the rest of the titles, some may not even be sure of which ones is my personal favorite, so I figured this is the perfect time to finally go ahead and label which ones are my absolute favorites and which ones are my least favorites. Number 10, Kingdom Hearts Recoded. Originally released on mobile devices at the time, it eventually saw its re-release version onto the DS. So, naturally, I've only played the DS version, but what do I think of the game thus far? Well, since I had recently beaten it a couple years back, I can honestly say that it's not as bad as what I thought it would be. However, it's still the weakest of the Kingdom Hearts series. For starters, it was released on a handheld device known as the DS, and it's not exactly as fully capable as like say the console versions of the Kingdom Hearts games themselves. With that said, I cannot say that it's absolutely the worst, except for one area, its story. If you don't know, all there is that needs to be known about the story is that Mickey, Donald, and Goofy are trying to investigate a particular entry into Jiminy's journal in order to figure out what they were talking about. In order to discover, or aka remind Mickey, that there are other people that they have forgotten. In other words, expanding the story. This is probably better explained through the HD cinematic version rather than the gameplay, but again, I would be ignoring some of the good parts of the game if I was to say that. The story is, after all, the weakest part, but what about its gameplay? The gameplay is pretty good, especially if you're used to like how some of the side stories of the Kingdom Hearts series has been, where it has a deck system and you choose the abilities that you're going to be using. What my personal favorite is though, is actually within this main hub, being that of the data hub. It's pretty cool just to see you being able to expand all of it, but also too you can adjust the difficulty in this same hub. So really it's pretty cool just to see all this put together. Next to the story, you also have the fact that the world choicing was pretty weak. It basically plays the same way as how Chain of Memories would have. Basically, you're replaying through some of the familiar worlds that you had been into previously and doing various things in order to progress the story. I.e. being able to beat the Heartlesses that are in within these dungeons. The dungeons are pretty cool. Some of them, however, though, do tend to be a little bit lengthy, depending on what is required in order to beat said passage. Overall, the game is alright, and while there's many people who actually have a genuine hate for it, there are some that have actually remorse and said that they generally like it. Me? It's alright, but I would prefer never to go back to it ever again just because of the boring storytelling followed by the dungeon that they have put in place. The combat's okay, average at best, so just keep that in mind if you choose to finally play this game. Number 9. Read Chain of Memories. Originally, it came out for the Game Boy Advance, known as Chain of Memories. And admittedly, I kind of like it, and I've actually been tempted about going back to that style just to replay it for all nostalgia purposes. But, it's Re Chain of Memories is what I actually like playing at the most. Obviously, for obvious reasons, the 3D environments and stuff of that nature 
But aside from that though, the deck system that first introduced into Chain of Memories was alright. Yes, it wasn't perfect, but it was okay given what it was actually built upon. With that being said, the story comprises of two sections. You have the main story, being that of Castle Oblivion involving Sora trying to regain his memories and the organization, and then of course its secondary story known as Reverse Birth with Riku. And then the secondary story is of course with the Disney worlds, and really you can just easily skip over these since they play no major role whatsoever, except for the fact that it's just rehearsing the story of the Disney cast. So in all intents and purposes, it depends on your personal take, if you feel as though as if you want to listen through the Disney slander, that really doesn't matter in terms of the big plot point. The deck system is really fun. Basically, depending on the number placed on the cards depends on the counter ratio. If your enemy has a high card, it will overpower you, but if you have a high counter, it will overpower them. You can also combine the cards in order to create slides, and this is where you have the individual abilities depending on the combination. So overall, this was actually a pretty fun game, and it's not a bad thing. It's actually, next to Recoded, was considered to be my least favorite game of to the series. Again, not to say that Recoded is bad, it's just something that I didn't care much for. Chain of Memories, though, I actually like it pretty well. Especially, again, since it was the introduction for the organization. And even though the Riku for First Birth story is a little bit different, it's also pretty fun just to interact and play as Riku as well, with a different random deck that gets placed into. Overall, I would definitely give Rechan Memories a recommendation, especially if you're a Kingdom Hearts fan and you just want something different. Maybe it might not fit highly into the bill, but it's still a pretty fun game to go back into and play. Number 8. 0.2 Fragmentary Passage this was released alongside Kingdom Hearts 2.8 as sort of like, I suppose you could say, a tech demo of what Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to eventually play out like. You play as Aqua, who is trapped in the Realm of Darkness, and you basically recap her story as to what she's been doing inside the Realm of Darkness. This isn't a bad concept, but what really drives home next to his story is the fact that you have objectives that act as sort of like a random achievement set. For every objective you complete, you get an accessory that can be equipped and you get to vary it up a bit. I personally like this objective system and it was actually something that I was actually hoping would be in Kingdom Hearts 3, never did actually get to be accessible, but it was still fun to know that they were able to expand the game just by adding in an objective system, which is pretty cool. The gameplay was fun and it was very entertaining for what it was, but the biggest criticism that I have for this game is that it is very, very short. The main story can easily be played through within one sitting, and as you can probably suspect, your level starts at level 50, going up to 100. So it's very, very short, but it's still a really good playthrough nonetheless. Again, the only reason why it's so low on this list is because of the length of the game itself. Number 7. 358 over 2 Days. This may come as a surprise to you, but Days is a highly request game that I want to actually see being remade for consoles. Why? For two main reasons. One, playing as Roxas is a highly desired thing to have within the Kingdom Hearts community. Seriously, you name one person and I guarantee you one of their top things they want to see in a Kingdom Hearts game, or at least in a mod of some kind, is to be able to play as Roxas. Secondly, it involves the organization. In other words, you get a backstory of the organization itself. What their purpose was, what their personalities are like, so on and so forth. You also get to see what happened within the year that Roxas was actually created after Sword cemented himself from the Dark Keyblade that he stabbed himself into the heart, thus creating not only a Heartless, he also created the Nobody known as Roxas. This also has an intertangled storytelling along with Shion in the process. Another reason why I love this so much is how engaged you are within his story. You play literally every day of the year that you are in this game. In other words, you basically not only interact within the story, you are also given various missions, and depending on how you take care of the missions, you could have potential ability to unlock even more missions. You can either speed through this game and beat it within a very short amount of time, or you can just go through it the long way, a complete certain objectives in order to unlock new missions. I just like how so in-depth they made it, to a point to where they even had a side saying where you can play as other characters that are within the game, such as other members of the organization, and potentially even the main cast like Sora, Riku, Mickey, Donald, and Goofy. 
Personally, I absolutely love this game, and it's literally within my highest recommendation that I see it get a remake. Sadly, I don't see that actually happening, but should such a thing actually come about, I would very much appreciate it. Number 6, Burst by Sleep. Burst by Sleep, while many people don't care much for it, it still has a large amount of people that absolutely love it. I personally myself enjoy it. The storytelling is pretty good. The only bad thing is, is of course you have the three story segments that you have to play through, such as Ven, Terra, and Aqua as well as a secret episode with Aqua, and depending on if you're playing through the Final Mix version, you have the secret episode. Technically, the Final Mix version doesn't really add anything in terms of the main game, it mostly adds towards the late game stuff, such as being able to take on Monstro into the arena, as well as two additional secret bosses. The story itself is alright, it's pretty fun, you do actually get an expansion as to how it all started, followed by who the first half of the organization used to be, when, before they became nobodies, of course. It's a good introduction to people to find out who some of these characters are that would be introduced into the Kingdom Hearts series later on, such as in Kingdom Hearts 3, of course. Number 5. Melody of Memory. Surprise that it's halfway through this list, right? Defi despite how differed the gameplay is. But here's the thing. I had very low expectations looking towards this game as to it being any good whatsoever. Not to say I didn't think the story would be good, in fact the story is so small and meager that it doesn't really play a significant role whatsoever. It's just to kind of be like a progression way of being able to see what's going to happen within the next game. Or at least what might happen. It's still a little bit in the unknown at the moment right now. But for what it was, it was alright. The main gameplay, however, though, I was very surprised as to how addicting it was. To a point where not only did I actually end up beating it, I actually platinum this game. Hard to believe that, right? If you're not familiar with rhythm games, it's basically that. It's just a giant rhythm game where you select the music track and then you follow the directions depending on what comes your way. The bosses, surprisingly, despite what they are, are pretty cool just to interact with. It definitely threw me off, because at first I thought I had to move the character. Turned out I didn't have to worry about moving the character so much as I had to follow the directions that the button commands was going to be prompted to. And the difficulty is actually pretty hard depending on which ones you go for. Some people would probably try going for the one button prompt, but I actually liked doing the regular prompt on his own. So it was pretty fun, I thought. Being able to collect all the different items and artwork and music pieces within the game was also another set piece that I liked it as well. It's not fully completed in Mythily, but it was still fun just to try to do a little bit here and there. And I also decided to do some online stuff, and it's pretty good depending on how the network connection works. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. I'm sure for some people who play the Switch version, it's probably no better. But I'm sure for some that play the PC or the PS4 version, it plays just fine on its own. Overall, I was just surprised as to how good the game actually was, so... While it's not the absolute favorite, it still deserves a recommendation for those that are true Kingdom Hearts fans, as well as those that just want to dive into something way different than the normal Kingdom Hearts formula that we've seen within the past few years. Number 4, Dream Drop Distance. I really, 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 really cannot recommend this game enough. The reason why I say that is because of how good Dream Drop Distance actually was. Again, when it comes to handhelds, they're not usually highly looked at as far as high-achieved games in the Kingdom Hearts series. But Dream Drop Distance really hit the door nail really well. Not only was it just a fun game just to play, it was also really cool just to realize of how big of a world they can actually create within such a small handheld device. Thankfully, we finally did get a PS4 version release of it, and really, it's probably my personal favorite version next to it. In the game, you basically play through as both Sora and Riku, and you're basically going through a mark of mastery of Sam's in order to achieve a higher power. To do this, you have to dive into the hearts that are sleeping at the moment, and by doing so, you collect creatures known as spirits, aka the Dream Eaters. Some people actually don't like the Dream Eaters segment of the game, basically sort of like Pokemon in a weird way, but I actually kind of enjoyed it. And you actually have a little bit of a customization that goes along with these Dream Eaters as well. You could change their color palette a little bit, you can raise them, you can give them treats, and the best part about it, for however long they stay with you, they earn experience to where they can actually get abilities that you yourself can use, such as Mega Flare, 
Fire Gun, Thunder Gun, Balloon, all these different abilities. All of them are really good and really fun in my personal opinion. It also introduced the World Ends With You cast characters, which honestly shocked the hell out of me, but I loved that nonetheless. It really kind of gives you that ideal segment of maybe we could potentially see other Square Enix properties within the Kingdom Hearts realms. Overall, if you're a big Kingdom Hearts fan, you definitely need to try out Dream Drop Distance. It's literally, literally the set piece that kind of moved the series on forward after Kingdom Hearts 2. And really some of the same formulas, such as that of the flow motion, did kind of follow through into Kingdom Hearts 3 a little bit. Number 3, Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. This is kind of weird for me to say, considering the fact that I've never been pacific as to what version Birth by Sleep I would say, but really you can play either version and not really miss much of anything at all. It just depends on how highly desired you really want to be in thorough with. But with Kingdom Hearts 2, I can't say this enough. If you want the true experience of Kingdom Hearts 2, you've got to play the Final Mix version. And thankfully, we have that here in the States. Thanks to the HD rema remaster versions in the PlayStation 3, as well as the PS4, as well as Xbox Series, as well as PC. So naturally, in terms of the story progression, Kingdom Hearts 2 basically follows the same story right after Kingdom Hearts 1, and technically Chain of Memories, and basically you do all the stuff that Sora, Donald, and Goofy would normally do. Travel to other worlds, help the various Disney characters, save your friends from an impending doom, or also too, introducing the Organization 13 at its fullest. The other thing too, is its completion log. So in the original versions, you had the actual world uh, completions and stuff, followed by the gummy ship. In Final Mix 2, however, though, it delivered a vast variety of stuff that you can do. Such as fighting the data versions of the organization, which is, of course, the advanced versions that you would have to fight. Some of the hardest bosses you'll ever have to fight in any series. You also have the fact that it introduces the battle mechanics that you would if you fought the other organization members that was in Castle Oblivion, which I absolutely love. It means that you can actually fight all 13 organization members in Kingdom Hearts 2 and in the way of Kingdom Hearts 2 styles. This also became the permanent staple of the combat system that was introduced in Kingdom Hearts 2. So if you want to thank the so if you want to thank the gameplay mechanic that's been featured into the Kingdom Hearts series, Kingdom Hearts 2 is where you should give your thanks to. I know this kind of surprises people considering Kingdom Hearts 2 is everyone's favorite, but why is it not my favorite? Again, based on the original release, I felt like it was very lackluster as best. Not only that, the completion aspect wasn't as good as like some of the other games that I would highly recommend, and I really, really, really do not care about the skateboarding thing. The way I see it is more of a best way to fast travel across the world. I didn't really see it as a potential game on its own. In fact, I'm not really a big fan of the Tony Hawk series, unlike everybody else who's a fan of Kingdom Hearts 2 is. But to say that I absolutely hate Kingdom Hearts 2 would be completely wrong, as I still love Kingdom Hearts 2. Again, I love the introduction of the organization, and I love the Final Mix version that introduces all the all of the organization that you get to potentially fight. It also introduced Pirates of the Caribbean world, as well as Timeless River, so I can't hate it completely. Again, I still love it, but as you probably notice, it's only my third favorite. So what could two other games possibly surpass Kingdom Hearts 2? Well, you're about to find out. Number 2, Kingdom Hearts 3. I cannot say this enough, but I feel like I need to go ahead and say this right now. I love Kingdom Hearts 3. If you need a full-on analysis of Kingdom Hearts 3, here is a link to the video in the description below about my ultimate video talking about Kingdom Hearts 3 as to why I love it so much. But to give you a small scenario, allow me to explain. Kingdom Hearts 3 has been a much wanted game for so long. Seriously, ever since Kingdom Hearts 2, everyone has been dying to know the next segment to Kingdom Hearts. The gameplay though is out of this world. I absolutely love its gameplay. Some people get tired of using the flow motion moves, much less the drive forms and stuff, but I absolutely love the attraction flow. I love the different battle mechanics that you can use. I love the different 
drive forms and keyblade transformations is all wonderful. And including the factor that the completion log is so much fun and so diverse, so different. And I absolutely adore just being able to explore this vast open world and just being able to collect all the stuff that they have in these worlds. Not only that, but it had a good send-off to the Saiyanor Saga that we have been following up to this point. And needless to say, it was a good way to end it in my personal opinion. Yes, it mythfully ended literally on a cliffhanger, but heck, it definitely does know how to drive the story, doesn't it? Overall, Kingdom Hearts 3 is highly recommended, and I cannot suggest this enough. I'm just so glad we finally have Kingdom Hearts 3 and we can finally move forward into the series. Uh, of course, that depends on how long they really want to drag this uh, wait period on. So what is my number one favorite game of the series? Well, if you follow along, you should know that by now. And if you've been following my channel for as long as you have, you'll know which one is my absolute favorite within the series. And that is Kingdom Hearts 1. I could literally talk for hours talking about why I love Kingdom Hearts 1, but for the sake of the timing of this video, I'm going to summarize it in a very short explanation, and it all comes down to one thing. Nostalgia. Nostalgia can be a bad thing, but it can also be a beautiful thing. For many people, they love the Tony Hawk games, and for some, they love Halo 1, and for some, they love, well, whatever game they love the most. Some prefer the new ones, but there are some people who still remiss and love the original game that they have played as a child. For me, that is the course within Kingdom Hearts 1. From its bland game play that I've loved as a child, to the bosses that it created, I absolutely love it. Plus, the introduction of all the Disney characters, followed by the Final Fantasy characters that I eventually started to explore into, followed by everything that just comes around into it. Kingdom Hearts 1 literally is the ultimate game in my personal opinion. And again, it's opinionated. I love it so much. I love going back into it. I love just re-experiencing it all. Now, admittedly, would I go back to the original PS2 version? I have to say, I would actually give it a shot again just to see if I could love Kingdom Hearts 1 in its original PS2. But the Kingdom Hearts HD version of Kingdom Hearts 1 I love just as much. If not, I love it a little bit more just because of the improvements, the improvements that they have made in the HD version. Again, overall, I love Kingdom Hearts 1 and it's my absolute, absolute favorite game of the series. But I plan to actually make a full-on video talking about why I love Kingdom Hearts 1 in its fullest. And trust me whenever I say this, it is impossible to talk about why I love it so much. There's just so much within Kingdom Hearts 1 that makes it perfect in my personal opinion. And so with that guys, I hope to see you in the next video where I fully talk about my insane obsession for Kingdom Hearts 1. See you then guys.